All right, what's going on, guys? Chris Talbot here with the Warrior Soul Podcast, and this week I have a special treat. Now, normally when I'm publishing interviews, I am publishing a still picture with just the audio. This week, I thought you might like to see the guy I'm talking to. His name is Kevin Meyer, and his channel is Pure Bullfit. Now, as most of you know, uh, this channel was a YouTube fitness channel for quite a while. And one thing I discovered about YouTube fitness and the fitness industry, as Kevin says in this interview, it's important to make this distinction. Um, there is a lot of intellectual garbage, misinformation, and just bad things that go around the fitness industry. And there's a lot of bad actors. Kevin has made it one of his missions to call out those bad actors and also not just to complain about the bad actors to put but to put really good information out there kevin's a great dude he served as united states marine corps veteran i saw one of his videos for the first time a couple of weeks ago and i saw that he was a marine vet and i said i got to get this guy on the show we had a fantastic conversation i think you guys will find it informative and entertaining and i hope you enjoy it so I'm not going to delay any longer. With that, let's get into this interview with Mr. Kevin Meyer from the Pure Bullfit channel. Kevin, what's going on, man? How you doing today? Not a hell of a lot. It is actually real nice to get to see you face to face. I appreciate you having me on the show. This is actually uh, first for me. I've been invited to a number of podcasts, but this is actually the first one that uh, I accepted and decided to go ahead forward with. Well, dude, number one, I appreciate that. Um, I found you a couple of weeks ago because um, I, I most I, people I did. What was that? Most people did. My channel kind of yeah. blew up very recently. Yeah, dude, you you ended up on my suggested videos. I was uh, I was eating lunch, which and sometimes I watch YouTube. It's like a guilty yeah. pleasure while I eat oh, lunch, yeah. and a lot of times I'm I'm sitting there and I'm I'm cruising over to YouTube Fitness to see what kind of new craziness is out there and everything like that. And then I saw you, and you made a lot of sense to me. Um, you know, you were calling some things out there that. Um, I'd always thought were wrong. And, uh, as people know, I'm a recovering YouTube fitness person. So, um, <laughs> and then the other thing was I saw, I saw an EGA on, on, on your chest in a picture. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this dude was a Marine. Let's, yeah. let's bring him on the show. So, uh, so Kevin, um, one, I want to, I want to start with, you know, tell me a little bit about your story. Where, where'd you come from? I know, you know, you serve. Let's talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, man, um, first Semper Fi, brother. Um, my service, like my story, it, it's all over the place. I, I grew up uh, moving around a lot, not because my dad was military, but, uh, because he, he worked for the government as an accountant for like, I don't know if you've heard of job Corps, but it's a organization that helps young kids learn the skills so that they can go on and lead productive lives, usually troubled teens and things like that. So we moved around a lot up and down the East coast. Um, I just got kind of used to that lifestyle. Um, aside from my adopted brother, Jason, I am the only person who served, and I'm, I, I would say this, Jason probably would be mad at me. I'm the only person who served successfully because he decided the military was not for him uh, very quickly and went ahead and got out. Um, but, you know, proud Marine, but a lot of people don't know, is is uh, I started off in the Air Force. I grew up in an Air Force town, Bangor, Maine, um, and, wow. and I joined. Uh, it was not the military experience I was looking for. No offense to anybody out there who's in the Air Force. I respect the service. It, it just... It wasn't what I was looking for. Uh, but also, my second day on well, my first duty station was 9-11. Um, and things got hectic from there. So I, I never really had a chance to uh, it, to enjoy the, the good parts of being in the service without the complicated rapid deployments and constantly being at war and so, so on and so forth. Uh, so 2007, I got out and I went home. Uh, tried to take care of family, tried to salvage my first marriage, and it didn't end up working. Uh, she wasn't in, as invested in it as I would have hoped, um, and that ended up not working out. Um, I've been there, brother. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't work out pretty egregiously and pretty pretty aggressively. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but I kind of tried and put my uh, put my life back together at that point, and I decided uh, to go back into the military. So I went back to the the recruiters, and I started talking to them. And the Air Force was ready to take me back. I had left as as a E five, a line number for E five. They were ready to uh, bring me back as an E four within six months. Give E five back, um, but. By just happenstance, uh, the recruiters for the Marines just called me in the office as I, as I was walking by and they started talking to me. And they're, I don't know about y'all's recruiters. I, I understand there's a lot of bad recruiters out there, but I had a couple of straight shooters. They told me exactly what it was like. Uh, they told me if I was really thinking about going back into it and, and uh, really getting what I wanted out of it after a brief conversation, that I'd consider the Marines. Uh, so I did, and I, I went back in. Now, they busted me down from E5 one so I, I went back as a private and i had to go to boot camp just like everybody else um and it was a surreal experience i gotta tell you dude i went in thinking oh psh, i've been to i've been to air force boot camp this is gonna be the same thing just longer <laughs> so wrong <laughs> <laughs> paris island yeah paris island Sam which battalion oh uh, geez uh, i was in uh i remember my freaking platoon number it was 1086 we yeah, Alpha. first battalion. First yeah. battalion. Yeah. Uh, it was a long time ago. <laughs> but damn, dude. I got my ass kicked. I, we got sugar cookied. Uh, not what it means on the internet today. Yeah. Rolled in sand when we're sweaty. Uh, you know, the, all, all the stuff. Smacked around a little bit. But I, I found what I was looking for. Call me a masochist. I found what I was looking for. I took to it right away. Um, and then I spent the first couple of years prosecuting the anti-narcotic, anti-human trafficking mission. Uh, in coordination with certain three-letter agencies. Uh, I'm not trying to sound cryptic. There's just only so much that I should say on a forum like this. Um, so leading into what we will probably end up talking about later, uh, I don't want to jump the gun, but I have direct experience with certain claims that other people in this fitness community were, were making that uh, yeah. kind of pissed me off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like I said, we're talking about that in Definitely going to talk about that one because we, we have a little bit of a target there. Um, so so how many years did you do in the Corps and, and what was your original MOS? So I did five years in the Corps uh, before I was medically retired due to a neck injury that I sustained in 2011 uh, mm -hmm. and then another five years in uh, the Air Force before that. Um, my original MOS was 2674, cryptologic linguist in support of the anti-narcotic anti-human trafficking mm -hmm. efforts out of the southern arc uh and then about 2010 um i did a extremely long uh individual augmentee with second marine corps special operations battalion for marsoc uh, mm -hmm. where we went over to afghanistan as part of uh special operations task force 82 uh, and spent about two years with them uh, working at the team level which was certainly an experience going from intel weenie to team member was uh, a big jump, um, really difficult, but it, it really opened my eyes to, to uh, you know, formerly working on the operations and strategic level to working on the, the tactical level was a massive shift in responsibility and skill set. And I'm really grateful for it because most of the endurance and most of the, uh, the outlook I have towards resilience and uh, in life and in what we're doing and my respect for consistency and quality over intensity and things like that. that that's all things that I learned with working hand in hand with, uh, with Marsan. Um, it was definitely experience I don't regret. Unfortunately, it uh, led to the end of my Marine career, but um, I definitely don't regret it at all. Wow. And, uh, and, and what was the, the biggest lesson you think you took from all that? What, what was the biggest, biggest thing you think you took away from your military career? Uh, I, I learned acutely that we are capable of incredible things when we have no choice or we perceive that we have no choice. When uh, succeeding is as necessary as air uh, or food, uh, that we are just capable of incredible things. Um, sometime way in the future, like after certain things have been declassified in 2042, not to put a specific date on it, but 2042, uh, I'm going to write a book about you know, everything that we learned and did. And that's a long time to have to wait for it. But, um, geez, I grew a lot. I grew a lot in those two years. Uh, I was a relatively immature, uh, late, to, late in my twenties, but in my early thirties, I, uh, I was put in positions where I had to learn a lot. I had a great deal of responsibility put on my shoulders. Um, but I also learned 
uh, not to be afraid of anything because it's not useful. Uh, right. Have a respect for consequence, but don't bother being afraid. That that never got me anywhere. Uh, I'm not afraid of working out. I'm just careful. Uh, I'm not afraid of starting this business venture. Uh, I'm just careful. You know, I account for as many risks as I possibly can, but um, if you just sit there and feel afraid of things, you're going to waste your entire life, and I'm not about that. That's definitely true, man. I mean, we're all going to die anyways. I mean, mm-hmm. 100 years from now, everybody we know is going to be dead. Everybody listening to this is going to be dead. Yep, well, yep. podcasts last forever. Uh, so there's going to be people with antennas coming out of their heads listening to this at some point, getting it downloaded directly to their brains. But <laughs> yeah, gonna be like, we're not going to be here, right? So, so we got to make the most of this while we can, you know, and, and fear, fear only keeps you from doing those things. So, so when did you start lifting and, and getting into fitness? Was it in the core? No, no, we did calisthenics mostly. Uh, towards the end of my career, uh, I started working out in the gym, but I was, I was like 175 pounds and six foot three. I think I peaked at 203 pounds. Uh, and that was on deployment with Marsoc because I was tired of being the smallest dude in the room. Uh, <laughs> and there were some, there's some monsters. Like yeah. everybody thinks, John Q. Public thinks that everybody in special forces looks like uh, John Cena or something like that. And it's not true. But there are some John Cena sized motherfuckers. Sorry about my language. Uh, there, no, there you curse as much as you want. You curse well. as much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are some big ass dudes, 6'5, 265, throwing weight around. Mm-hmm. Like my squat max at the time was their bench warm up. It was, it was, uh, at that point, it was humiliating. Um, but I've definitely grown, grown out of that sort of mindset. Yeah. Um, now I just want to see what my body is capable of. So towards, I think, 2010, I was like 33 before I started getting under the bar and taking that seriously. Previous to that, all I cared about was push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, and my three-mile run. That's all I cared about because that's all that had any metric of success associated with it in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you got paid. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and I had, uh, I've been promoted the day I was eligible every time to that point. And I wanted that trend to continue. Ultimately, you know, getting hurt kind of screwed that pooch. But uh, uh, I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't take weightlifting seriously, uh, and I didn't start powerlifting or anything, or power building or anything like that until I was thirty-five. Uh, so really, only five years' experience. I uh, just turned forty in March, and everything that I've accomplished, as far as strength and resistance training is concerned, has been in the last five years. Shit, we're the same age, man. I just turned forty mm-hmm. in May. I saw that on one of your videos. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like two months older than you. You look great, though, man. You got less grays than I do. Yeah, you know, I, I'm really fortunate. My girl, she's into the whole salt, salt and poppy thing, so she's kind of like trying to stress me out uh, to get that gray to come in. No, <laughs> uh, I just uh, I got good genes, I guess. Uh, everybody says I don't look 40. I appreciate that, uh, but uh, definitely feel it. What is it, Hirsch? Oh, hey, Clover. We're trying to talk here. You want to say hi to the public? he's got an awesome dog there wants to be on the air yeah she does get out of here i am trying to do my first podcast go on go on get sorry man go ahead it's all good man um so so 33 i mean a lot of people would think okay 30 years old a lot of guys are peaking at like 29 right 30 33 is actually a really good age to to get into it um in my opinion because you you got a lot more potential. I mean, your body's settled. Um, you, you, your, your cerebral cortex is cooked. Um, so you're not going to do anything freaking stupid. And you are, you know, you have a lot of potential to produce some really positive hormones there at, in, in your early 30s. So that's a pretty good age to get started. How was your progress at first? Real bad, because uh, I was also dealing with significant physical disabilities. Uh, but, um, I fell in after I was medically retired uh, from the Marine Corps. I went to work for Blizzard Entertainment, uh, the video game company. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have a most big companies out in Southern California have like a health and wellness program. Uh, mm-hmm. where they'll, they'll get some coaches in and they'll take people through like a, a bull crap workout, uh, make them feel good about themselves and make it seem like they're doing something for the benefit of their employees. With Blizzard, one of the good things that they do. Um, they take that very seriously. They didn't just hire a coach. They hired Scott Brangle from East Coast, West Coast Strength and Conditioning. who's like nice. an internationally famous strongman coach. Yep. 
Leifa Ingalls, the World's Strongest Woman, the inaugural Arnold Classic World's Strongest Woman, uh, and current lightweight World's Strongest Woman is was one of my coaches at East Coast, West Coast Strength and Conditioning. Uh, and those guys are amazing. So they took me, like, I couldn't walk. I was walking like an 80-year-old. I was all hunched over. I had uh, bad kyphosis. My hips were tucked under real bad. Um, I couldn't do an air squat. I literally could not do an air squat at 34 years old. Uh, and, and I told him that. And uh, he literally grabbed me by the ear and drove me over to the squat rack. His first words were, hi, oh yeah, fuck that, come here. Uh, and drove me over to, yeah, <laughs> drove me over to the squat rack and assessed my form. Um, and in about two years, I went from not being able to do a single air squat to squatting 405 pounds and later 455 pounds, uh, which is currently where I'm at. Um, and those lessons were like just being willing to put in the work work around my pain, be as consistent as possible. The lessons that I picked up from working with the team guys in Marsoc uh, transferred over to getting control back of my body. I may not be the fastest I ever was because I certainly am not. I'm not running a 4-5-4 four, 40-yard four, dash anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but once I do get going, look out. Uh, but <laughs> I'm 254 pounds. And, uh -huh. uh, but I am the strongest by far I've ever been. Uh, my numbers may be crap for like a healthy individual trying to compete in powerlifting or something at my weight, but they're really damn respectable for the things that I've been through. So I'm extremely pleased uh, with the progress. Um, and it's all come from consistency. Literally have a rule and a motto, do what you can every time that you can and give yourself no crap for what you legitimately cannot do. Uh, and the only thing that you have to remember there is to be honest with yourself about what you can't do and what you don't want to do. Uh, but that's, that's it, man. It's not a, it's not complicated. It's not a secret. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's one of the things, um, about what we're going to talk about in a second is that everybody out there wants a quick fix. Everybody out there wants a quick fix. Everybody yep. wants a trick. Everybody wants something, um, that is going to put them on the quicker path. And, uh, you know, you're right. There are no tricks. It's, it, it's gotta be about consistency. It's gotta be about getting into the gym every single day, you know, being as consistent as possible, um, making sure you're not putting crap into your body as far as food yeah. goes, you know, that was okay. the hard lesson. I'll yeah, absolutely. Hard. Absolutely. So, so did you diet improve all over that time too? By that time? No. Um, I was, I think when I started working with ECWC, uh, and I'll, I'll be straight up honest with you. They offered nutritional counseling. I ignored it uh, because I wanted to eat my Big Macs. I ate two Big Macs, one meal plus an extra Big Mac every day for lunch. For like three You're days. doing the CT diet. <laughs> <laughs> I was fine and all that stuff. And now don't get me wrong. I love CT Fletcher. I love that man. No, me too. I, I love the guy as well. I disagree with a lot of the uh, training philosophies that were put out on his channel over the years. Um, but I bought into him. At first, I, I was very much a grip it and rip it, eat big, lift big uh, kind of guy. Everything else was secondary. I was looking for what shreds of glory I could hold on to after having um, the Marines taken away from me, which is how I viewed it. You know, it was a freak accident. But uh, the thing that I loved and the thing that I was awesome at was uh, Stampede, sorry, uh, was taken away. Uh, so I was looking for some sort of glory. And uh, that actually didn't end up helping me out. It wasn't until uh, I pulled my head out of my ass and uh, started training intelligently that I've made the most progress, started listening to Scott. And then uh, honestly, to, to other influences that, that, that aren't really that popular with, with a certain crowd. Like I'm a big fan of Jeff Cavalier. Mm -hmm. I've met the man in person, I follow his programs. His advice has significantly helped me out. So uh, I am unabashedly a supporter of Jeff Cavalier, not because he's popular, but because he's effective. Um, but you know, it wasn't until I started taking care of myself, doing yoga, uh, which I never thought I'd be doing yoga. I used to make fun of people who did yoga, but I was wrong. I was 100% wrong because yoga has helped me more than my physical therapist did with dealing with my chronic pain. And, and not to get too deep into my like personal issues, but degenerative joint disease, five herniated discs, one functioning kidney, herniations from eight to 15 millimeters. I'm Jesus. broke. I'm, I'm messed up, dude. Uh, and I, I don't do that for like, give me credit, give me praise and adoration. No, uh, when people start talking about how their knee aches and they can't do this or that, uh, I use those experiences and, and what's wrong with me to kind of demonstrate mm. you're selling yourself way short of what you could be accomplishing. 
Uh, you're letting that limit you. You're assigning that boundary and that limitation to yourself because you're comfortable where you're at. Um, so yeah, I don't actually know what I was answering there, but I apologize. Well, no, yeah, we were we were just talking about your nutrition and mm. uh, you know how, how you switch. Now you mentioned you have one functioning kidney. Does that inhibit your protein consumption and and yes. and think you eat? Yes. Um, so there's a lot of folks out there that think that excess protein doesn't cause kidney kidney damage. There's a very narrow scope of people who have zero kidney problems whatsoever. Um, right. From an acute kidney injury that I experienced while I was in the core, a combination of exhaustive uh, dehydration. Uh, I was hospitalized for that. Um, both my kidneys shut down. Only one of them came back online. Um, so I limit it maximum to 0.7 uh, grams per pound of body mass. Um, or about 80% of my lean mass, if I have a reliable number on what my, my lean mass is. Um, and that keeps it, you know, I haven't had any problem growing or getting stronger. So I know mm -hmm. that that's not protein for my body. Um, it's all the kinds of proteins and making sure you get it consistently throughout the day that has made a difference for me. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, I mean, protein is one of those things. I mean, there was so, so much mythology, I guess, centered around protein for a long time and, and, yep. uh, if you actually look at the studies, I mean, there, there's different numbers associated for different mm -hmm. types of people, but, but that's 0.7 is a, a good amount of protein for a person if they want to get strong. That is the maximum I'll use. Um, and I haven't had any issues because, and I, I get my, um, uh, too much information here. Uh, <laughs> I, I get my levels checked, uh, my kidney health checked, uh, with a urinalysis. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have blood work done pretty regularly, uh, since I have those things from, from the VA, I have those options. Um, to make sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be because longevity is definitely the goal. Maybe it may sound dumb, but I want to see 97 years old so I can see the tricentennial, uh, tricentennial of the country. Uh, cause I was mm -hmm. born just, you were too born just after the bicentennial. So I'm trying to, that's my goal now too. Then <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> my goal now too. <laughs> I'll see you there, dude. We can, we can, sit we'll, we'll be there together, day. brother. That's right. Absolutely. So, Dude, yeah, I, that I mean, that's a load of health problems, and and honestly, yep. it's really inspiring that you were able to to kind of get yourself together there. Um, now, I want to talk about this because um, you know a lot of people that get into fitness. What made you yeah. jump into YouTube? What made you jump into into the fitness industry itself? Well, when I was working at Blizzard, the fitness industry part first because that's different than YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, the fitness industry part. I don't know if this comes as a surprise to you, but people who work in video games are out of shape. Re uh, that's a stereotype that's real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, at working as a personnel manager at Blizzard Entertainment, uh, I had 22 people at a time, sometimes 25 people, and easily 70 to 80% of them were actively obese, not just overweight, straight up obese. I had two employees over 450 pounds. I had seven employees over 325 pounds. It was egregious. Uh, so as I was getting control of my own life and seeing uh, success there, um, not everybody, there's obviously tiers of levels of employees at every company and not every employee can afford the, um, the coaching that I was able to afford working as a manager. Uh, so what I decided to do was start holding power lunches, but HR said, we can't let you do that unless you get a certification. So that's when I got my first uh, National Academy of Sports Medicine certification. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they were bluffing because when I showed up with the certification, they were all like, oh, yeah, let's do some paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I would drive my truck to work uh, with my uh, portable power rack, about 200 pounds of weights, sometimes 300 pounds of weights, depending on who I was working with. And I would hold free workouts every lunch period on the basketball court. Uh, and I thought I'd get four or five people, but I ended up getting almost my entire team at lunch. Um, wow. Get between 18 and 20 out of 25, like three times a week. And I fell in love with it. Uh, I found out it was something I really enjoy doing. So I have been mostly pro bono for people who can't afford it or at like stupid reduced prices, like $30 a month and stuff like that for years uh, from 2013 to 2017. Um, I either did one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, or I built my, my house in Austin before I had to sell that after the divorce. Uh, I, I built a box gym and I'd invite people to come over and they could work out uh, with me there mm -hmm. and do programs. And I just, I, I just loved it. But YouTube uh, was not something that I thought I could do. Uh, in fact, I was, uh, I 
think it was, yeah, it was Elgin Infant Intensity put out a video on something and I made a comment on it uh, and he popped back because I, I just happened to disagree with him. He's a great comedian. I think he's funny as hell. Uh, but I disagreed with him on a particular thing he was saying. Uh, and he goes, you know, I don't know why people don't make their own YouTube channel if they want to disagree with me because it doesn't make much sense to come on my channel and disagree with me here. All the advantage is mine. Uh, and that made a lot of sense to me and it got me kind of thinking about it. I'm like, nah, it's not for me. Um, I don't know anything about the platform. I don't know anything at all. When I started thinking about it more and more, I could put out some content that was useful to people, actionable information, uh, no bullshit, not selling anything. And I talked about it. And I talked about it. Uh, and then I put it on the back burner because my sister, she just passed away in uh, February uh, from cancer. Sorry, uh, she, you want to talk about fighters. Like that woman was given six to eight months to live back in 2012. And she fought and fought and fought and fought until 2008, uh, 19, uh, until February wow. 2009. Um, one of the most inspiring, incredible people this, this world. Unfortunately, did not have the opportunity to know the way that I do. Um, and it was, man, this sounds like some movie stuff. Uh, it was literally the last conversation we ever had. Um, she got to the point where the chemo was killing her and, and uh, the cancer was killing her at the same time. Um, and she knew that it was just a matter of time. So I uh, drove down to Massachusetts to see her. And, um, you know, we were, we were ultimately saying our goodbyes. And um, I was apologizing for not being around more because I was across the country all the time. And uh, she asked me what I want to do. I, I said, well, this is the stuff that makes me happy. And she said, you need to do it and stop wasting time. Um, and, you know, coming from a person who didn't have any more time, uh, that was a more powerful message than any of my friends encouraging me or, or any of the professionals that I worked with. Um, I was always telling myself, well, maybe when I get my master's, maybe, maybe when uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an actual physical therapist, maybe when I'm this, maybe when I do that, maybe when I got some credibility. Uh, and she told me, forget all that, just go for it. Um, and I said, I can't see, but I don't want to be like these other guys who, who are, uh, who make their channels and they sell stuff. That's what it's there for. They, they, they start mm -hmm. these channels to help people and then they just put all of the things that would help them behind gates, pay gates, uh, behind, uh, you know, they make finance as an obstacle to a, to a better quality of life or their goals or things like that. And like, I just can't do that. She said, so don't. And it dawned on me. I can make an informational channel and I don't have to charge people for my programs. There's no reason to do that. That's two hours of my work. That's I, I sit down and go, okay, how do I want to approach getting to this goal? Because there's there's a hundred roads to Toledo. If that's where you want to go, pick the one. It could be scenic, it could be the most direct route, tolls, no tolls, whatever. There are lots of different ways to get to your goal. You just have to pick a pick a road and get there. So I just started writing programs and I started putting them out for free on a Facebook group. And then I started making videos. Uh, and I quickly realized. Uh, my first two videos, people don't know, my first two videos are private because I've tried putting out informational videos and I cringe so freaking hard and like listen to my own voice and, and coming off like a doofus. Uh, like, I'm like, who the, who the hell do I think I'm kidding? Like, I just got a CPT and a couple of specializations. Like, I'm nobody special. Nobody should listen to me. So I got in my head and I took them down. And then I started watching uh, like Alan Roberts at Every Damn Day Fitness, James Linker, Shred of Sports Science. And I'm like, wait a minute. These guys are calling out, they're clearing the field because of all this bullshit out there. Um, I'm sarcastic. I got jokes. Maybe I could do that. Uh, so I tried four fitness myths. And it was my first video that I put out there. And I went way, I went way beyond uh, what I, I feel like I should have. I had characters. I was tying bandanas around my head. This whole <laughs> swami. Uh, you know, I was doing a bunch of silly ass shit. And it was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, and I had like seven subscribers. And it went to like 70 subscribers. Uh, and I was, I was like, all right, that's pretty good feedback. Maybe in two years, I'll have a thousand. Um, that was not the case. Uh, as you've seen, I've been at this for five months and we just passed 23,000 subscribers. Um, there's a hunger. There's a hunger for yeah. being authentic. Uh, and that's Dude, I was looking at your channel. I was looking at your channel before we got on. And the, I think the video before the last one you put up, you were like thanking people for 10,000. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. He's at 23,000. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy growth there. Dude, but, and I don't get it. Like, and the engagement level is off the charts. Yeah, I, I, 
I'm average. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a stats guy, but I try to go in there and I try to at least interact with every comment, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm straight up about it. It's like, I'm not going to delete your comment unless it is, uh, you know, it's bigoted. Like if you're just saying anti-Semitic things or homophobic things or things like that, like, I don't care how much you disagree with me or how much you insult me. I'm going to let you have your place to say. And mm -hmm. unless you're being a complete useless dick, I'm going to respond. Like, even if you're like, you're an asshole, you don't know shit. Uh, this is how the body works. I'm going to politely respond with, well, actually, according to Dr. Schoenfield or according to this study or according to that, this is how the body works. And I'm going to go ahead and lean on their expertise as opposed to, you know, you rando internet guy. Um, but in, uh, unless they're, you know, like trying to attack somebody or something like that, then they'll get a sarcastic comedic, uh, response out of me. And I, I am storing those for a mean tweets edition later down the line. So those guys have a <laughs> nasty surprise coming for them. Uh, but yeah, awesome. the growth, growth's been stupid. Uh, and it was the Blaha video. Um, and it wasn't like really solely about him. It was about a certain category of people that really don't have the level of expertise, uh, don't have the experience, and who are actively seeking to misrepresent the body of somebody else's work, or the body of work right. of someone else. Uh, that's where I draw the line. Critique of Jeff Cavalier or you or me or C.T. Fletcher or anybody is absolutely necessary. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it should be respected, but to take what somebody said out of context, make it look as bad as possible, and then lie about it, like, I got a problem with that. So that's what I see yeah. those. That yeah, they, they, dude, there's like, so number one, well, I, I think your Blaha video was the first one I saw, which was like, I like this dude. I like this dude a lot. It's freaking, he's pretty, he's pretty freaking awesome. Now, for those of you who don't know who Jason Blaha is, and he's not the only one we'll get to, but <laughs> he's amongst, um, he, he's what I consider the worst of the worst on Amen. YouTube. Like yeah. the absolute worst of the worst. And it's not just because he's putting bad advice out there, but he's made a name for himself, basically tearing people down. Yep. Like basically fitness days. Yep. Trying to, trying to tear people down. He's got himself sued a bunch of times, mm -hmm. but the most egregious thing he's done. And this, this pertains directly to this audience um, is he's claimed that he's some super secret squirrel assassin that served in the military. <laughs> and yeah. he did this video where he was crying about blowing somebody's brains out over the wall. The first talking about the first time he killed somebody watching the life drain out of their eyes and, and all this crap. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, dude, what the, wh where, yeah. why YouTube pulls people down all the time for, for, for near that. Yeah. Nowhere near that. And this dude's sitting here making money off of YouTube, spreading lies and stealing <laughs> valor. Yeah. And threatening veterans. Yeah. Was a lot yeah. He threatened a group of veterans for outing yep. him. Yep. Crazy. Yeah, no, I, I lost my mind. I was, I was actually following uh, Ice Cream Fitness at the time when he started doing all that. And he moved over to Juggernaut Systems or whatever the, the hell that was called. It had Juggernaut in the name. And uh, I, I watched him. What I thought was happening was a person with special needs was unraveling. That's what I thought was happening. Uh, and I felt bad. Uh, but then he started threatening vets. And I'm like, not. A, th there was never any question, is this all fake? Uh, because, like, I don't, I don't know if we talked about it at, at all uh, uh, thus far. But my experience in the Marine Corps is as close to the bullshit that he was spewing, as I think is reasonably possible. Uh, I worked on the team level with Marine Corps Special Operations Command. I worked uh, in coordination with intelligence agencies, liaised to them for multiple years at a time, um, those three letter agencies, uh, in counter narcotics, anti human trafficking. I worked directly with the cartels. Um, it was my mission set when Los Zetas broke off from the Gulf Cartel and started that war in 2010 or 2009, 10, and 11 where like 60,000 civilians in the border states of Mexico were killed. Um, like I knew firsthand the things he was saying was bullshit. So there was never any question in my mind uh, that he was full of it. Uh, but when he crossed the line of getting challenged and devolved and started saying, if you show up in an expo and I read your body language is aggressive, I'm just going to shoot you because I don't flinch when the bullet goes past my head or some complete utter bullshit. Always yeah. talking 
tough. Like, I'm not a violent person anymore. I'm not a violent person. I don't want to say anything in a recorded fashion that would get me in trouble. Uh, but it would be unreasonable not to have a desire to slap the stupid off his face. Um, and I'm a reasonable person. So draw your own conclusions there. I, I, God, I hate that guy. But was never in a position to say or do anything about it. Uh, and then I saw this, this video of him calling Jeff Cavalier a pussy. Everybody, he trains pussies. And I'm like, you know what? I've, I've had just about enough of this. I got a channel now. I got 1,500 whole subscribers, So, which was big growth. That, that five months, 1,500 subscribers. I was I sad. mean, it was huge growth. I mean, Jason kept his subscribers secret up until he hit about 80,000, I think, yeah, after yeah. he got kicked off of I- Ice Cream Fitness and then mm-hmm. restarted his channel. So, I mean, like, I think that took him about five years or something like that to get to 100K, right? Something like that. I've got really good friends who have really good content, informative, intelligent content who are struggling to get 500 subscriptions and they've been at it for a year or two years. It's just, Dude, you, you got to be in the right I, place. Look at my channel. I've been on this for six years and I think I'm at 20,300 or something like that. You know, I know, I, I know it's over 20. It's one of the first things I checked not to like, you know, compare. Yeah. Or anything, but like, yeah. Okay. What's the motivation for this guy? I've never heard of reaching out to me. Uh, mm-hmm. I just wanted to make sure I covered my basis and I looked at your, I uh, looked at your stuff and I'm like, no, he's established. He's been around for a while. Uh, yeah. Let's look at his content. And I went through your content. I'm like, all right, this guy and I, we see eye to eye on like 95% of things. I like, I like what you're doing. So it's more than happy to make this the, the first uh, program. Outside. Yeah, absolutely. And then the point is, I think in this day and age that the 5% that we don't see eye to eye on about, we could have a civilized discussion about it. You know what Amen. I mean? And I think that's, what's missing out there. Right. People, but the problem with this industry, I think, is that when, like, if somebody is a true scam artist, one of the things that happens here is ego is a huge factor, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, somebody, they'll, if you criticize somebody, they come at you. They come at you yeah, like crazy. They'll, they'll come at you hard. They'll be like, you know, and I think that's a bunch of BS because at the end of the day, what we're all supposed to be trying to do is help people, right? We're all if supposed that's to be the real goal, sure, um, right? But I find those people, people come after me all the time now. And I've only got, like, I'm not trying to insult you or me here, but 20,000 is not a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. We got we got mouth-breathing wall touchers out there with 400,000 subscribers passing on bad information, like crack open these eggs and keep it in a non-airtight container for four days and slowly sip your drink. Like, that guy's got 400,000 uh, subscribers. So um, <sighs> we're not big or loud enough to shout it all down yet. Right. Uh, it's, it requires a lot of people. And I just, I threw my hat in like to do what little help I could. Um, it's uh, There's a hunger for it apparently because it's growing really rapidly. That's awesome. That's awesome. Why do you think people get attracted to the mouth breathers <laughs> or, or, the, or the, the, the craziness? Why do you think people get attracted to to the people out there offering the quick tricks. And maybe I just answered my own question there, but you, you pretty much did uh, because while we all like to, there's nobody out there that, that refutes the idea that there is stupidity. There is uh, negativity, bigotry. There is bad things out there. Everybody agrees that those things exist. Nobody thinks it's them. Nobody thinks they're the one of average intelligence with, uh, more naivete than actual information. They, nobody thinks they're the one that's susceptible to being misled so easily. Um, and I find many of us, myself included, fall well, more of that non-skeptical kind of accepting things as they come at us uh, mentality um, than we'd be comfortable acknowledging. Uh, so after that, we're also lazy. Like mm-hmm. people have such potential to do great things, but we have to we have to be motivated or disciplined enough uh, in order to do so. Our bodies were, were designed or evolved to survive. They can perform, but we have to teach, train, and incite them to perform. Its base state is happy to just shove things in its face and take the easy way out. We're like water. We will take the path of least resistance. Only under pressure are we going to change the face of the rock face. Um, are we going to cut through steel? And we got to be pressurized in order to do so. Um, so enough analogies. Um, it's attractive because it's easy. Because people like... V-Shreds say, I eat two Kit Kats, two king-size Kit Kats every night and drink a bottle of Coke before I go to bed. My secret diet tips 
or one of your three body types is all you need to know in order to be able to do the same thing. Now, if that were real, if that were real, on the one hand, and then your other option was you're going to have to eat a lot of uh, chicken and broccoli. Uh, you're going to have to restrict your calories to uh, output more energy than you intake. Uh, and you're going to have to work, be active every single day. I'm like, oh, I don't know. That's Those Kit Kats sound pretty fucking good. <laughs> If those were both real options, yeah. So we trick ourselves into thinking that it is a real option or we are uninformed and ignorant enough. I don't mean ignorant in a bad way, just uninformed to believe that it's actually possible. This kid's in shape. He's got abs. I just watched him take a bite out of that Kit Kat. It must be true. Um, we're, yeah. We want the easy way out. I think we really do. It's yeah. just not the case. Yeah. I. Uh... You know, I think on the supply side, there's also something there too, because you, I mean, we're at a, a, a crazy spot in history right now where pretty much anybody could start a business. I mean, you get, and that's awesome. yeah, it's awesome, right? You can start, you, you get a social media handle, sure. you, you start recording yourself, you put some things out there into the world. You can pretty much start a business with no overhead, almost no overhead. You need a computer. No education. Right? Right, no education, nothing nope. like that. Right, crazy. the The problem with that, though, is that on the supply side, things get really saturated. And mm -hmm. um, if you look at YouTube, like six, seven years ago, there weren't a lot of YouTube YouTubers. Right, you had like Elliot Hulse, you had Jeff Cavalier was out there doing stuff. Um, you had the Hodge twins. You had oh, yeah. CT came along, right? You had Ziz, you had, uh, um, and certain people you watch for motivation, certain people you watch for advice. Um, and the thing I think that happened was that all the big dogs, like like Jeff Cavalier and, and, and uh, you know, Elliot Hulse, they covered a bunch of stuff. And then there became an increasing need to position yourself Niche. Uh, yeah. as being different, right? Yep, yep. And I think that's stronger now more than ever. So I think that as this grows, we're going to see more craziness, more, more insane pieces of advice, more, more just dangerous things, more and more dangerous things. You know, I look at, I look at what happened with Craig Plitt. Um, and, and he, you know, he was a great guy. I got to meet him in person, but the, the, it was YouTube craziness that led to his death, you know, and, and it's an unfortunate thing. I mean, he didn't do any crazy nutrition things. He, ran, he tried to outrun a train, you know what I mean? And, and, I think there's going to be a lot more stuff like that going on. Unfortunately, I think you're right. And we're already seeing it start to crescendo again. Uh, we're not just at the point where we've got a bunch of people with no credentials saying crazy dumb shit to sell product or move Amazon or, or um, you know, sell bunk ass programs and things like that. We've got actual PhD doctors in kinesiology putting out just ridiculous, ineffective and sometimes dangerous bullshit so that they can distinguish themselves from this volume, this deluge of information that's already out there. Um, on, on my channel, you're not gonna, I might cover certain principles like cluster sets or how I approach certain training methodologies just to have um, just to have those conversations with, with the people that want it and the people that follow me, but I'm not gonna put a squat tutorial out there. There are better squat tutorials than I can manage to put together. That would just be, that would just be siphoning views so that I can make some, a couple of bucks. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, ever say that there is a secret this or a secret that um because there's no secrets it's like fitness nutrition it's simple it's not easy right mm -hmm. people need to understand that those two concepts are not the same simple as in it's straightforward you either know what to do or you don't you know how it works or you don't easy no man you got to put in the work and and that's not attractive uh it's much more attractive to say you can get the butt that you want by using these dumbass banded exercises that I am utilizing way more equipment in this gym than I need to, to accomplish the same thing I could squatting. Uh, but buy my bands 20% off. You don't want to miss out on that deal. <laughs> like it's way easier to do that instead of find a way to add to the conversation. That, that's why, you know, despite the fact that I am not a sports scientist, uh, someday maybe I will be, uh, but I am not, I just have a great respect for information expertise and, and, I, I respect science. Even as a religious person, I respect science. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, don't make things up. Find ways to add to the conversation, which is the same thing science does. Research comes out, and if it's verifiable, repeatable, 
it adds to the conversation. It doesn't change the conversation. It doesn't debunk everything that came before. It says, oh, here's another facet that we should consider and look at. And, and then, you know, there's other inspirations like Bruce Lee, uh, which some people might think is silly. But that man had dropped nuggets of wisdom that I think everybody could benefit from. Mm -hmm. uh, the opening passage to his book, uh, The Tao of Jeet Kune Do, which was the martial art when he thought he was going to create the world's most incredible martial art that was superior to all martial arts and eventually learned, no, all I did was make another fighting style. The, the opening to his book says, take what you can from this and use the rest as toilet paper. Um, and, and that's a philosophy that we could do more with. There's always going to be way more information than we need out there. It's going to be a deluge of it. There's this, uh, we're going to be inundated with it all the time. We have to take the things that are actually useful out, apply them to our lives and, and make that progress and just use the rest as toilet paper. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of folks are putting out pre-used toilet paper. And that's pretty disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just so many different things. I, uh, we and we could go on forever with that. What what that's is your advice? Far. No, no, absolutely. And I, I mean, you have a and I don't think we mentioned the name yet. Your channel is Pure Bull Bullfit, Pure yep. Bullfit on YouTube. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be be a huge class of of things to come as far as calling people out and, and and seeing what's going on, actually going on in this industry. And something I definitely definitely think we need to fix. What do, what do you think is the solution and, and what should, I, I know that better information for, for the consumer side is, is, is one solution. Is there a solution that says, okay, if you're a trainer, what is it you should do to be able to find success and to be able to propagate your business, but, but also to be honest and, and to avoid a lot of these crazy, crazy things that, that people are getting themselves into. Well, I think the answer to that question is, is uh, it goes in two directions. One, what can we and are we going to do in one direction? And what would fix the problem? Because uh, we're in a kind of a bad state at the moment. Um, what would fix the problem is if we somehow, and I don't think this is really plausible, but if we somehow had a worldwide or at least countrywide um, authorizing body, certifying body, that everybody, before they were allowed to legally give exercise physiology advice, nutritional advice, had to go through, get educated, be certified. We do not have a system like that. We have a, a bunch of um, certifying bodies that are the equivalent to the movie rating system. The movie companies rate themselves. They monitor themselves. So NASM, NSCA, all good organizations. Uh, but ultimately, they all use curriculum from the same business, uh, human metrics. Uh, they get all their information. They just put their brand on it. Um, and that is susceptible to bullshit working its way in there, like somatotypes and any other uh, high, highly popular fad nonsense. Uh, so, like, the solution would be we have to have consequences for doing the shit that people are doing right now. Um, and we can't do that without some sort of certifying body. And I think that people would resist that, especially here in this country, because any additional oversight, especially governmental, um, is viewed as it should be skeptically. Uh, mm -hmm. But that, so I don't think that's actually going to happen. So what are we left with? Uh, we've got a growing evidence based community that is more than willing to start fights. And that's mm -hmm. what we got to do. Uh, and there has been some success with that. I don't know if you follow Alan Roberts at Every Damn Day Fitness. Um, yep. uh, uh, to some extent, his, his wife, um, uh, I am also full disclosure. I'm part of the damn collective. Um, I do weight loss uh, management and accountability services with them. Um, his channel, James Linker, Shredded Sports Science, even, you know, a comedian like Elgin Tensity, uh, Elgin Infinite Intensity. I'm sorry, I got his name wrong. Um, you know, calling folks out uh, and making there be a consequence, making it be unpopular to spread bunk ass information. Uh, we've seen some success. Chris Heria, for instance, put out a few months ago a horrible, horrible squat tutorial. I mean, it was just garbage. People were going to get hurt. Guy had no business whatsoever weighing in on it. Uh, guys like V-Shreds, uh, same thing. Calling them out has had a change in their behavior. Um, be it as little as, okay, we acknowledge we're not an expert in this area. This is something that I do and you can try. Changing their statement from, the only way to do it is this way. Um, and this is the best way. And this is what the science says when that's not what the science says at all. Uh, so that's had some effect. It's slow. 
And it's a lot of hard work. And we need about a thousand more people doing it if it's going to make the kind of effect that we need it to. Uh, and it's not popular because, uh, like, I've only been doing this five months. I get hate mail. Uh, I got I got people threatening me, which, good luck, guys. Um, I got people threatening me from, you know, uh, Couch Potato, Jason Blaha, uh, his fans. Uh, it's not serious stuff like that. It's just better not see you in public, you know, crap like that. Uh, all the, <laughs> Please, yeah, like, no offense. No offense, but bitch, please. Um, <laughs> I ain't worried about you. I ain't worried about your coach. I ain't worried about none of that. Uh, there's going to be kickback. Uh, there's a guy, I cannot remember his name. He did functional movement. Uh, he did uh, functional fitness, movement patterns, and stuff like this. It was a bunch of like hyper complicated, really not all that necessary uh, ways to um, engage your body. And, and like uh, uh, he was going after Jeff for a while, and then Alan Roberts went after him. Uh, and those guys were like hacking his accounts, trying to get into his bank account uh, uh, to the point where when he got contacted by somebody in the community, he was like, I'm not even sure this is really you. I'm, I'm not sure this is not somebody just trying to weasel their way into my. They were trying to hack into Alan's bank accounts. Oh, they were, they were a coordinated attack. Like um, Holy the fans crap. take it really far. And you know, that's rare in the fitness industry, but it's super common in gaming. Like if you're a, female gaming personality and you don't show a guy your breasts uh they will doss you they'll tell everybody where you live they'll harass you they'll threaten to kill you and unfortunately in one recent incident uh, a cosplayer was actually beheaded um because she what? wasn't responding beheaded yeah uh murdered uh because she didn't respond the way um and th that's how bad these communities can be so there's kickback uh and not everybody's up for that uh, but that's what it's going to take it's going to take calling people out, being willing to walk up to them at an expo and say, you're still full of shit. Stop being full of shit. You're getting people hurt. Um, but there's danger in that too. Not to go on and on and on and on about it. But you take a look at a guy like Kenny K.O., uh, who might have some very admirable things about him. He might. I just haven't seen him. Uh, he made a name for himself calling other people out, but was also caught doing all the same things that he was calling everyone out for. But he will walk up to you at an expo and say, you're full of crap. Let's prove it right now. He will fly out to your gym and say, I don't believe that you lifted that. Um, I don't believe that that's a training that you actually do. Let's do it right now. And it, what, uh, it chaps my ass to say this, but I think we need more of that. I hate to give the guy any credit, but I think we need more of that. Um, that's well, that's out. what they used to do in uh, the beginning of Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is people would yes. go around and the people's JoJo's, do the gym challenges, things like that. Um, that I miss that. <laughs> I miss that really bad. Uh, we 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 need that kind of accountability in this world. There need to be mm -hmm. consequences for being full of shit, and currently they're not. Yeah, you can get rich being full of shit. There was uh, I was watching an Alan Roberts video the other day, and the reason why I got to the video was because you mentioned the salmonella shake, and I was like. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. might be a rabbit hole I have to go down. And so <laughs> I went over to Alan Roberts' video, and I was like, he was, I forgot the kid's name. It's a kid. Tyrone. Uh, Tyrone the fitness Ty addict. Tyrone the fitness addict. Okay. Oh. And he was showing clips of this video, and I'm like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, is that video real? Like, did it Alan is. do anything to the video? And, no. and then so I went over to, to, to Tyrone's yeah. channel, and I was like, holy shit, that's real. That, uh, yeah. He just... He 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 drinks a shake with raw eggs over a period of five days, yep. and Jesus Christ, the kid's immune system must be great. But <laughs> oh, he, doesn't really, he doesn't really do it. Uh, that, that was an idea that one of him or his handlers had at the last minute, and they just threw a bunch of shit in there. That shake wouldn't save you any money. It would cost you twenty five dollars for four servings. What uh, it, it, and it had like it had something like I think it was like ridiculous amount of sugar. Oh I, yeah, because they just poured the juice in from that from that berry pack, um, that frozen berry pack from Walmart. No, no, man. Uh, and, and he's like indicative of the problem. He's entertaining. I get that. Follow him to be entertained, but he's presenting himself as a fitness nutrition expert. And this is a guy who, however, he got his physique. Don't care. Is telling people that he got it by doing twenty push-ups a day. Uh, he'll show up at a gym completely plastered and try and work out. And that's the line. That's the line where people like me should be drawing it. Not, is this person a threat to my channel? Are they taking some of my viewership? It should be, is this person presenting erroneous or dangerous information? And am I in a position to uh, to address it? 
Uh, I only take on the people where I can lean back on research or science or or established, well-established and reinforced principle. I take those folks on and say, this is not true. This is why this is where you can go to for the information. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only successful way that you can approach it. Um, but, you know, in my early videos, I, I swore too much and, and that turned some folks off and I've tried to rein it in a little bit. But when I'm pissed off about something, I dropped the F-bomb. Just- Me I'm too, man. Kidding. All the time. So uh, so where are you taking your channel? What's what's next? What's what's in the what's coming up in the future? You know, it's going to sound like bullshit and it's going to sound um, it's going to sound contrived. But uh, this is me, dude. This is really me. Uh, I am most excited about my free fitness challenges. Um, I run them. They're called Go Fit Yourself. Uh, currently I'm running one. It's got 400 people involved. It is a recomposition challenge to lose as much body fat percentage uh, as is reasonably and safely attainable and put on as much lean mass. So I'm monitoring 400 people. And if I see people who are doing dangerous things, I pull them out of the competition. I say, I'm sorry, you, you can um, continue along with us, but you're no longer officially in the competition because of safety reasons. Um, I'm going to just keep running these challenges. Um, 10 week peak for power lifters who, who care about it. Recomposition for people who are trying to lose weight. I just want to do as much good as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am medically retired. Uncle Sam takes care of my bills. This is not a grab for money. That's why my programs are free. That's why my competitions are free. Uh, and that's why, like, right now my merchandise, um, which was just to help the channel, is at cost. So, like, when people are going on there buying that stuff, it's it's honestly, it's just whatever Teespring charges and then shipping. Uh, so I'm not actually getting anything from that. Um, I just want to make an impact. Like, that that sounds so cheesy and, and contrived, but that's honestly what I want to do. Um I want to reach as many people as possible. I want to debunk as much bullshit as possible. And I want to provide as much actionable information for people to legitimately close the gap between them and a longer, better quality of life. Uh, and I don't know what that looks like just yet. I really don't. I didn't expect to be 20,000 plus subscribers in five months. This was not part of the plan. I've grown faster than anticipated. And a lot of ways to like grab cash have presented themselves to me that I'm just flat out okay. saying no. Uh, there's supplement companies, there's clothing lines. Uh, you know, they see somebody get hot and they're like, Oh, let's jump on this. Let's jump on it early so we can get our claws in. I've told them all no, and I'm going to continue to tell them all no. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm only going to work with and for people that I trust and that I feel like their vision is in line with mine. Uh, and that's why I, that's why I work with the damn collective, Alan and Crystal Roberts. They're good people. He's crass. Uh, and, <laughs> and I definitely wouldn't want him on one-on-one coaching. Um, uh, Athlete X, he was one of the line coaches for the competition for the Athlete X Games. And I looked over and I saw him just screaming at this kid right in his ear, like a bulldog, jumping up and down with his arms like a bulldog. <laughs> screaming at this kid, give me one more, motherfucker. Give me one more. Punching the concrete as hard as he could. His hand was swollen to the size of a melon by the time he was done. I'm like, man, I'm glad he's not my personal trainer. <laughs> I don't need that kind of motivation. Uh, but he's an intense dude. But he's a good dude. Um, and he means what he says. And he is extremely generous with his resources. Um, and he's extremely generous with his time. And he's the only reason, him and James Link are the only reason that my channel has, has experienced the growth that it has because they saw me and they called me out. I didn't like ingratiate myself with them. And, and they were like, oh, we're going to help you along. And we're going to push you up and prop you up. I just started talking about the things that I believed in. Um, I started talking about how their programs and their information helped me. Uh, and uh, he just reached out to me one time and he's like, hey, this is what you're doing good, but here's this long laundry list of things you're screwing up. Uh, if you fix those, you'll do better. I did them, and I've done better. Um, but that's the kind of relationships I want to have, things that are mutually uh, beneficial or people that I can invest in. I want to be in that position where uh, that's the ultimate goal. Is like I want to be not looking down, but looking back at people who are where I was and who want to do the same good things, and I just want to prop them up. I want to drag them along. To whatever success that we can attain and do some good in the process. Uh, that, yeah, it's that's for, for that. I can tell you that <clears throat> just from my experience, because I, I guess I'm kind of an old dog um, who <laughs> got spit up and chewed up and spit out by the fitness industry. You're still kicking. One, one of the, well, I'm still kicking, yes. Um, kicking in other ways, right? But um, right. one of the things I will tell you is this you're doing good in that aspect, getting yourself associated with good people. 
um, one of the biggest mistakes that I made and that I see other people make is that it's very easy to get involved with the wrong people in this industry because they wear a lot of masks. They wear a lot of masks. They'll come to you with a smile on their face. They'll come to you. They're some of the best actors I've ever seen in the world, but, uh, but you'll end up, you know, kind of get yourself into a lot of the wrong areas and the wrong places and a lot of negativity brought into your life because of that. So good on you for doing that. And that's a huge lesson for everybody at home here. Build a network of people you can trust, people that you can rely upon and and make sure that you are building that network carefully. But also, you know, some self-accountability. That is 100% I agree with you, but also be a person that people can trust. Mm -hmm. Um, don't just don't just look for people you can trust because if you're not self-examining, trying to figure out why you're doing what you're doing, seeing if your motivations are really where they're supposed to be, and really in line with the words that are coming out of your mouth, uh, then you're failing yourself. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, Kevin, number one, I want to thank you for coming on here today. Um, number two, I, w- I just want to I want to put all your links out there. I know you've got you got your channel, Pure Bullfit. Um, you've also got a Patreon and you got a Teespring out there too, right? I do, but I'm not, I'm not really pushing those. Uh, I literally put up the Patreon because people asked me to, and that's, that sounds ridiculous, but they asked me to, it's not something that I'm not looking to monetize this. Uh, but if people want to come and watch the channel, I'm more than happy to have them. Um, I have a Facebook group by the same name, pure bullfit. Uh, there we put out. Um, that's where I, I release my free programs. That's where, uh, I put out the information, uh, try and build a community of like-minded individuals to assist each other. I appreciate your willingness, uh, to put my like links and merch out there. Uh, but, uh, it's not really, it's not really what I'm about, dude. Um, that's a voluntary thing. If people want to, they want to wear a shirt with, with, uh, my, my minotaur on it or, or some of the things that I say, cool. That's awesome. That feels good. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, honestly, the only thing that I would say is if, if folks are looking to take advantage of the weight accountability, weight management service provided by the Dam Collective, um, I say check them out. You can find them at uh, damserenityathletics.com or uh, everydamdayfitness.com. There's links there. Um, that's Alan's programs where he's helping people who desperately need it, struggle with food addiction, behavioral uh, uh, binging and things like that. Uh, that's our team and that's what we do. Um, that's, that's the only thing that I would say, Hey, let's call attention to that because that is an extremely generous program. Um, and I'm really, really proud to be a part of it. Uh, but that's it. Yeah, yeah. The prices there are, are, are really good for what you, what you guys offer there. I went and take, took a look and, um, I don't think that there's a place you'll find anywhere else in the industry that, that, that really beats what's be what's being put out over there. So and that doesn't cover everything, not to like. God, I don't want to sound like a commercial, but I'm really proud of this. Like we talk to our people every day. I got 30 clients right now that I talk to every single day. I any any program, me or any other coach in there, any exercise program is free, plus the, the Hellfire uh, circuit training that um, Crystal puts out, plus the yoga that she puts out. It's like 30 sessions a freaking month. You can do yoga every day, plus the face to face once a week, uh, kind of like we're doing right now. On this platform, in fact, um, you know, I, for that, I don't know anybody else who provides that level of contact or that level of service. Um, and I, dude, I'm stupid proud to be a part of that. And watching people, my favorite thing is like I can't say names or anything like that, but I have a young lady that just sent me a picture of two shirts. She sent me the picture of the shirt she used to wear and the one that she's wearing now, and we both cried because. That was awesome. She's gone down four sizes. Um, helping my mom, uh, you know, who I don't mind calling out specifically, 69 years old. Uh, she's lost 45 pounds already in, just since February. Um, like, that's where it's at, man. That's, that's worthwhile. That's the thing that, that gets me motivated, gets me excited. Like, I got goosebumps just talking about it. Um, that's my favorite thing. Anyway, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent on that. Uh, that's all good, man. We were trying that's to wrap all good. <laughs> no, dude. Um, I really appreciate that. And, and, um, you know, when you find something like that, that's, that's truly your calling as far as serving the other people. Um, yeah. it's one of the most amazing things in the world. And it's one of the, one of the things this shows about for everybody out there, 
if you are truly looking to make an impact, everybody thinks you got to go really far to make an impact, but there's ways you could serve other people yep. right now. And small scale, if, just start right now. Don't waste any more time. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, Kevin, again, I want to thank you so much for coming on here. And uh, I appreciate you having me. I really, I'm a big fan, recent fan, but a real big fan of what you do. Absolutely, man. I'm a big fan of yours. So, uh, Thanks, man. Um, to everybody out there, listen, um, go over there, check out Pure Bullfit. Uh, go out there and check out the Damn Collective, and uh, get out there and live your best lives while you can. I'm done with that. Whoops. <laughs>